Okay, we've got springs fixed, shocks fixed. I think we've got all the parts fixed that we need to get fixed. And now we're finally ready to finally close the Canyon Creek Loop. Do you ever look at a map and all the lines, all the roads, and how they intersect? It's easy to let your imagination wander, each connecting one area to another, one road to another. The map is very two-dimensional, with no real idea of what kind of condition the roads are in, or if they even still exist at all. That's been our journey with the route I'm calling the Canyon Creek Loop Trail. This would be our fourth attempt at connecting two major Forest Service roads in what is approximately a 50-mile loop. Easily a day's drive, but also a great route for getting out of town for the weekend and getting some time in the woods. Today, we would finally be closing that loop. If all went well, I'd upgraded my suspension and even managed to push through some obstacles that were previously holding us up. Since the first trip up Canyon Creek included my buddy Aaron and his partner Andy, it seemed only fitting that they were along with us for the trip. At first, the trip took us over familiar ground, roads that we'd traveled before. But as we pushed deeper into the forest, we started into unexplored territory. We had definitely found a better route. Almost too good. For much of the route, we were on what I tend to describe as a gravel highway. The biggest challenges we encountered were some occasional washboards and some wide switchbacks. Eventually, we found ourselves at the top of the 37 road. This was the road that was washed out in one of our previous trips. As we started down the 37 road, I was hopeful that we would be able to make it to the cutoff that jumped over to the 42 road. Was at the cutoff road where things got a little dicey for us. It was a steep road that was rocky and narrow and eventually turned into a bit of a shelf road with little promise of turnaround if things got too sketchy. We proceeded with cautious determination. We would not be denied. We pushed through some of the most challenging roads either of us have seen so far, dodging oil pan busting rocks and some off-camber tracks that gave us a little bit of concern. We're both still learning what our rigs can manage.
Eventually, our efforts would be rewarded. Not only did we manage to get through to the 42 road, but we came across what would go in the books as one of the most amazing campsites we'd ever discovered. Okay, so I watch a lot of channels and y'all talk about epic campsites, but I'm like, those don't live, those don't exist in real life until today. Look at this. Such an amazing sight, such an amazing view. This is the view that we get to wake up to in the morning. The sun will be setting, right, or sun will be rising in the morning. It does, it does rise in the morning. The sun will be rising right over here somewhere. After dinner, we spent the evening sitting around the campfire, talking excitedly about the day's adventures and the adventures we didn't even know were in store for us the next day. We woke up, not to a beautiful sunrise. Instead, we woke up with our heads in the clouds, literally. At 4,000 feet elevation, it was damp and chilly and foggy, so we skipped breakfast, packed up, and hit the road. Can you back up? Um, please no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Turns out, I'm not the only one who doesn't love shelf roads it would seem that the day would be throwing us challenges right away. I'm not sure if the fog and low visibility made the acrophobia easier or worse. Either way, we were not to be deterred, so we kept climbing. I keep on fighting.
It was at this point where we reached the point where Ellie and I had been the week before. For me, the Canyon Creek Loop Trail was complete. But for my buddy Aaron, he still had a few unfamiliar obstacles to navigate. Although by now, not much worse than anything we'd already done this weekend. From the back seat, see the going by as we're passing the streets. Dim lights in her basement, dark. Leather jacket in my whiskey, me and I can find a way to compromise. And miss some looking in your eyes, and I don't leave it all the rules behind. Welcome to the Welcome to the wild I'm crazy No one wants you, no one else And I won't waste another hour Baby, you don't know your power I'll take you to the wild Baby, see you welcome to the wild On Mulholland Drive I take the wheel and you close your eyes You know I love the chase and we don't hesitate A little danger makes you feel alive And I, well, everybody wants you But they can't do what I do I feel like there's nothing left to lose Welcome to the wild It's every man for himself Welcome to the wild I'm crazy No one chill, no one else And I won't waste another hour Baby, you don't know your power I'll take you to the wild See you welcome to Trouble, but you got no place to go. But let me tell you, this city, it's a jungle. Welcome to the wild. Well, we made it. Yes, we did. After, what, four months of trying to make this loop, <laughs> we finally, and, and four attempts, we actually successfully made it. All the way through. I think that's the fun part of overlanding for me, and what overlanding is to me, is you look on the map and you see a place you want to go or you see a route you want to take, and you map it all out and then you go explore it and see what's it because on the map you can't really see right what's going on on that road like nope. it'll you don't even know what's going on that road today right so that's the fun of overlanding for me is just going out and exploring and checking it out seeing what there is to see and testing yourself like can i make that trip you know can we can we get across that road? Can we, 
you know, what kind of obstacles are we going to encounter? What kind of uh, tricky, sketchy roads are we going to encounter? And, and can we make it? Or are we going to have to turn around? <laughs> and on this particular route, we had to figure out a couple of different detours before we could actually make it around the general route that we wanted to make. Right. So it's a really, really good feeling when you are I able to six, finally successfully get there. And my buddy Aaron, I, he's he's definitely feeling that. Like he's he's got the bug. He <laughs> uh, he knows. He knows. He's he's seen like even even at the beginning of this. Like there was a couple of the roads. They were a little concerned about you know whether they were going to be able to do it or not. And then once you got in it, you you've got yourself in a couple of off camber situations and things like that. And you know what you can do, and you and you you understand the limits of your vehicle a little better than you just then it then it just becomes fun and and gaining that experience i think is right. part of that fun and that, that's how it's been for me anyway so get the experience get the confidence yep when you have the confidence of knowing where your vehicle lies it makes everything else more fun and it's also really cool and this is a good you know good segue for that is that it's also really cool knowing that little changes that you've made in the vehicle have made a huge difference right. like putting the heavy duty springs in the back of this thing just you, you, immediately you like it's you can just tell how much more stable it is on the trail uh how how much better it's carrying its load right. and and some of those off camber situations this thing actually feels more stable right. um because it's just not rocking around so much and uh yeah, it's just so so knowing that some of these things that we're doing are improving the, the vehicle's ability, the van's ability to to take on these roads uh, is a really good feeling. It, it, it just feels like you're, what you're doing is the right thing. And, and so super, super excited for this trip and, and the things that we've learned on it and the places we've explored and the things we've seen uh, definitely, definitely an 11 out of 10 weekend like, <laughs> yes yeah, absolutely it, it just absolutely awesome and the cool part is this is only the beginning i know it so we are on our my annual uh summer shutdown and so we're on vacation for the next week and this weekend was just a teaser <laughs> we're getting ready to go do a, a big trip this is going to be the longest trip we've ever done Yep. Off road. Yeah. So we did the clay lock trip last year. Right. But it was all blast. pavement. Yeah. It was all pavement. This year, we're going off road. Yes, we are. And I'm not going to tell you where we're going to go. You're going to have to tune in for the next video to find out when that Such is. Such a good surprise. So, anyway, <laughs> if you like this content i mean if you love astrovans, you definitely should be following this this channel. But if you love this uh, this content. Well, shoot, I was just getting on a roll and then my battery died. What I was trying to say was, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. That'll help us in the algorithm so that other people who might enjoy our content will have an easier time finding us. If you enjoy Astro content or if you're just a fan of the Chevy Astro Safari, or if you think it's just really cool that we've got a unique overland rig and maybe you're into some light overlanding, that kind of thing, you might want to consider subscribing. That way you'll see all of our new content whenever we upload something and you'll get a notification. Hope we'll see you on the next adventure.